Hey, what's up, everybody? I just wanted to do a quick update in regards to topical steroid withdrawal. I don't do a whole lot of videos like this anymore, but I think this is important. I've been kind of sleeping on it for the past month or so, but I did just see a major update in the paper that Dr. Ian Miles finally got published. For those of you who saw the podcast I did with Dr. Ian Miles, he was just in the process of getting his paper published. He had what's called a white paper that is attempting to define the diagnostic criteria for topical steroid withdrawal. And for those of you who have gone through this or know someone who's gone through TSW, one of the most frustrating things about this condition because of its lack of awareness is that doctors will often just say, oh, you just have severe eczema. And for those of us who've been going through it, we know this condition hits different than eczema. It's totally different. But we haven't had the language or the science to back us up yet. And frankly, that's mainly due to people just not looking. And big credit to Dr. Ian Miles for doing this, for actually looking. Because once he did, and when he was on my podcast, he said very quickly he was able to find stuff. So what happened was and on March 14th, they finally published this paper, which says this, and this is on the NIH's own website. So it says topical steroid withdrawal diagnostic criteria defined by NIH researchers. So here we go. It says what? Researchers at the NIH have determined that dermatitis resulting from topical steroid withdrawal, TSW, is distinct from eczema and is caused by an excess of an essential chemical compound in the body. Okay, so remember, you go into the doctor, you say, doc, I think this, this, these, these uh, cortisone creams are really screwing me up, something's different, and they go, no, 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 it's just bad eczema. That no longer holds up anymore. We have literally found differences. So let's keep going. Scientists from the NIH's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, identified treatments that could be studied in clinical trials for the condition based on their potential to lower levels of the chemical compound called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NID+, or niacin, a form of vitamin B3. The findings were published today in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology. Let's go, finally. Dermatitis, okay, it goes on to explain what dermatitis is, blah, 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 blah. And here we go here. It says topical steroids, specifically glucocorticoids or topical corticosteroids, have long been used as a first-line treatment for dermatitis caused by eczema because the drugs are safe, effective, easy to apply, and considered well tolerated. Well, now we're finding out that that's not so true. Not everyone is doing well on these drugs. That being said, caveat not to demonize the, the glucocorticoids themselves. I do think most people tolerate them well, but we also have to make more studies discussing what the heck, what are the patterns and what are the characteristics in a person that puts them in a pathway or more vulnerable to a topical steroid withdrawal. Because you'll talk to people who use these for longer periods of time and they don't have this. So what is that? We still don't know. So some people experience dermatitis after using topical steroids for prolonged periods of time and then stopping. A condition called TSW. Diagnosing and treating this condition is difficult because TSW is not well understood. You got that right. Symptoms Symptoms include skin redness, burning sensations, skin heat, which is thermal dysregulation, itching, and peeling, which can even occur on parts of the body where topical steroids were not applied. As TSW and eczema have similar symptoms, it has been difficult to distinguish the two disorders. To better understand TSW, a team led by scientists in NIAID's Laboratory of Clinical Immunology and Microbiology evaluated a previous survey that included 1,889 adults with symptoms similar to eczema. By dividing the participants into those with self-reported TSW and those without, the researchers identified characteristics unique to TSW. And again, this is the big point. We are now beginning to prove that TSW is not severe eczema. The researchers then conducted a pilot study including 16 people with symptoms consistent with TSW, 10 people with eczema but no symptoms of TSW, and 11 people without skin disease. They found that people with TSW symptoms had elevated levels of NAD plus or niacin in their blood serum and skin, while NAD plus levels were within a typical range in people without TSW symptoms. And I remember on my podcast, Ian Miles was talking about how for thousands of years, eczema has been described. None of the symptoms of TSW were described thousands of years ago. This is something that is iatrogenic or caused by a medicine.
The researchers subsequently used cultured skin cells and a mouse model to mimic TSW conditions. They found that NAD plus was produced in response to topical steroids and caused inflammation. The model suggests that the administration of a drug that blocked the formation of NAD plus called a mitochondrial complex one blockade would improve symptoms. In a pilot study to further assess this treatment strategy, the researchers evaluated subjective responses among study participants who used the mitochondrial complex one blocking drugs, metformin, berberine, or both. Okay, let's just quickly stop here because people, uh, ever since the white paper was out, people were like, oh my God, is berberine the cure? I'm not so sure of that. And neither is Ian Miles, for, for example. And if you want to try berberine, not all berberine brands actually have the amount that they say they do. Uh, Ian Miles recommended Wellbet X, Natural Factors, and I think Solaray is another one. Me personally, I have not noticed that much of a difference. I Again, I haven't used it for three to five months like these participants have, but it's worth trying. But again, there are people who like use traditional Chinese medicine and in those herbs, there's a lot of berberine, more than in the study. And they don't notice that much of a difference. And again, uh, these people who tried the berberine for three to five months and noticed improvement, it could be hard to tell because in four to five months, depending on where you are on your journey of TSW, that could be a lot of time to heal. So it's, it's hard to tell, but it's hope. Okay, so moving on. These scientists provisionally established criteria that can be used by healthcare providers to identify TSW in people. People who have stopped topical steroid treatment and meet the criteria may be diagnosed by practitioners as having TSW. Now, wouldn't that be something? The researchers suggest that patients identified as having TSW could be treated using the proposed mitochondria mitochondrial complex one blocking drugs. The result of this study may help practitioners identify TSW in patients and work towards developing safe and effective treatments. According to the researchers, more research is needed to determine whether all patients with TSW have an excess of NAD+. I touched on this earlier is that not everyone's the same. Uh, and if you talk to other practitioners like Olivia Sue Friedman, who's a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, that does seem to be the case. So this is just the beginning. The diagnostic criteria criteria will help healthcare providers and researchers to better understand the prevalence of TSW and evaluate the effects of using topical steroids. Okay, so what does this mean? Does this mean you can go to a doctor now and say, I have TSW, here's the study, believe me? I actually don't know. It doesn't seem like that's what they're saying. But it does say that given the widespread distribution of this article, that could begin to happen. If, you know, if people are open-minded enough, and I hope that they are now that the credible people such as NIH are involved, though I, I do have to say I'm pretty wary of whatever this safe and effective treatment may be in the coming years to treat TSW, because before now, the consensus seemed to be that topical glucocorticoids were safe and effective, and now we're finding out it's not quite as cut and dry as that. So what I really hope is that People such as Dr. Ian Miles and others who want to take this seriously will look at other treatments that don't have to do with constantly taking a prescription or spending a lot of money on a biologic. And I think many of us who have this eczema to TSW pathway journey would like to live in a time where we don't have these skin issues. Because a lot of people, they'll have eczema throughout their childhood and that eczema will burn out. Right? I know a lot of people may know folks that have gone through that sort of story, but because of these glucocorticoids that mask the symptoms, it seems like we prolong that period and make it worse. And I don't have the science to back that up, but I do know people that did not use glucocorticoids and as they grew older, their eczema wore out. And I pose the question that if we didn't force glucocorticoids on people, would more folks be okay? later on in life. It's not the story with everybody. And I do think there's going to have to be multiple different types of treatment because I know plenty of people who have TSW who are way worse than me and they've been going through it way longer than I have. And maybe they need a more permanent, regular type of treatment. But I'm really excited because the NIH seems to be on it. I, I give extreme kudos to Dr. Ian Miles. If you guys want to learn more about like the nerdy science behind this paper, feel free to check out the podcast where Dr. Ian Miles came on and explained the whole thing. He also has a really, really good video explaining it on his channel. 
So one thing I really want to point out here is even though that the diagnostic criteria is supposedly defined now, we have a long way to go. And I don't think you would just be able to go into your doctor now and slap this on the desk. I've heard horror stories of people with research coming in, handing the doctor a paper and the doctor just like puts it to the side and says, yeah, 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 whatever. So there are several things that I really want to hammer home with people with TSW. If you physically can, try to go to itsand.org, you can download a whole kit that shows you exactly how to talk to your representatives in your local government in the US. And you can have a topical steroid withdrawal resolution for awareness in your state. I did it. It was relatively easy. We've had a few more states do it. There is a former mayor in Massachusetts named Kendris Vasquez. And I know that he just recently passed some laws in Massachusetts, where they will have to start beginning to study TSW and report to a board of some sort. So if we can get that in all 50 states, that would be massive, because I don't think papers like this are quite enough. We have to fight and we have to prevent TSW and not just treat it afterwards. I really want to make sure of that because there are so many young kids, young people, and people of all ages, frankly, that their lives get destroyed by this. And if we could prevent it by like having a warning on the glucocorticoid bottle that shows like, hey, if you do this, this, and this, if you are this, this, and this, you could be prone to TSW. And this is much worse than your current skin condition. So I think really, really great news. It's great to hear great news with TSW because oftentimes we're just stuck in this same battle, but I'm excited and I hope you're excited too because things are changing. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. I wish you the best of a healing time. Make it a comfortable one and see you on the next video. Peace.